Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Al's Tabletop. Today we'll be working on a unit of five Blood Knight Vampires on these awesome skeletal mounts from the Age of Sigmar line. I had seen this great piece of art from GW and it inspired me to base my entire color scheme around this idea of purples for the armor of the horse skeletons, uh, greens and blues for the bases, and other details on the models, and of course the classic red of the vampiric dynasties. I started off with the equal parts of Luxine Purple contrast paint and a couple drops of Viejo Gloss Varnish. I apologize for not showing you all of my mixes, but if that's something you all would like to see, please let me know in the comments below. I go around the armor of the horses. Uh, I try to be as neat as I can, but honestly it's not a big deal if you get some of these colors on the other parts of the model. We can go ahead and clean up later if need be. For the armor of the vampires, I used equal parts Viejo Gold and Blood Angels Red mixed in with a drop of flame orange ink to boost the vibrancy, and also it aids the metallics since this ink is naturally pretty glossy. Same as before, I go around all of the vampires' armor and also paint the shields in the same color. For the capes, I used equal parts black green, intense scion, and a small drop of black to bring it down in value. And also a couple drops of this ultra matte varnish to kill some of the shine from the white zenithal prime step. I then used equal parts light bronze and white gold metallic from Pro Acryl with a drop of ochre to bring in some of the saturation for the detailed parts of the horse's armor and shields, the skeletal bat face looking things. Honestly, I have no idea what they may be, but I think they look super cool. I take my time and go through each model. And please remember that this is the initial base layering process too, so don't feel like you need to be super neat the entire time. It's totally okay to mess up. I mess up plenty. Now over the summer I picked up some of these instant color paints from Sale 75 range and they are pretty good. Uh, just to reiterate, I'm not being sponsored by any of these companies. These are all paints that I purchased for myself. And they work the same way as contrast paints, but I feel like they are a bit more transparent. And so I go to town on all of the smaller details of the horse and the vampire and the leather straps, the horse brittle and halter. I basically wet blend all of these tones together. Going fast, not really caring if one bleeds into the other. I feel like you get more dynamic and interesting colors if you do it this way. For the chainmail, I used gunmetal gray and a couple of drops of the ochre to warm it up a bit. For the horse skin, I used equal parts Plague Bearer's Flesh and Basilicum Gray to desaturate the green a bit more and add opaqueness to the Plague Bearer.
Omoto Sahara Beige is a really nice color for anything bone related. I use it here for the hooves and the skeleton. Now using the airbrush, I go back in with Blood Angel's Red Contrast to give more saturation to the armor plates of the vampires. And I do the same with Luxor Purple. Go all around the horse armor, giving more depth and saturation to the armor that I could not achieve with that one pass of the airbrush. And these are the results after letting all the paint dry. Not too shabby. Absolutely stop here if you wanted to, but let's get into some oils. I used oils, but you could absolutely use washes if you wanted to. On the palette, I have shadow green, magenta, intense blue, and black from the Vache Lone line. I also used a solvent-free gel by Gamlin, which increases transparency at the same time increasing the gloss, which is great for true metallics. I create mixes of these colors, and I'll admit, I go crazy here. I don't really follow exact recipes or anything like that. I just work it all around the model. Not really worried about, you know, how much is on. It, uh, for the most part. After it's kind of sat for an hour or so, I go in with Q-tips and a round brush to get the hard to reach areas of the model. And now for the edge highlighting and finishing touches. And this is the point in the paint shop where I really take my time and don't feel like I'm in any rush. Since I feel like this step is crucial in bringing out little subtleties here and there of the model. I begin with highlighting the purple armor, then I get into the armor of the vampires, the orange highlights, progressively working my way up in value with lighter colors, adding little dots and lines, creating interesting textures on the surface.
As we finish up here, I add in some nihilac oxide. I don't think I'm pronouncing that right. Sorry about that. It's a really nice verdigris color from GW. Take some orange in a semi-glazed consistency and use that to shade in the recesses of the holes in the armor, making some dots and lines as I go with both the oxide and the orange, and also making sure not to flood the surface too much. So the home stretch, I take mahogany by Proacryl and a bit of water to make it more transparent and use it as a base color for all of the bases. I then take those instant colors we used before and add in some lime ink and lime green for the plants and other pieces of foliage on the ground. And I work them in a wet blend kind of consistency, not cleaning up or anything like that in between colors. I try to just meld them all. Once it's all dry, I then dry brush Vallejo Dark Sea Blue and Frozen Flesh, this desaturated blue on all of the bases. I do this for a couple of reasons. To add some cold tones to the ground, at the same time helping marry all of these tones that we've done uh, together, kind of getting it ready for the final wash. For this wash, I use Dreadful Visage and Pilar Glacier. Both of them are these new contrast paints and they're absolutely awesome. I really like these two. I use them because they're both very transparent, which works great for this step. The main thing is to try to blend everything together and to tone down the harshness of the dry brush. And with that, we're all set. These are ready for the tabletop. I really hope you liked this tutorial, and if you have any questions, anything at all, please leave a comment below and I'll do my very best to answer all questions.
Thank you very much. Please consider subscribing as it helps me and it supports the channel. Until next time, be well and take care of each other.